you had asked me back in 1989 what a cinematic platformer was, it likely would have conjured up images of Super Mario Bros. with a more intricate story. In reality, cinematic platformers were completely different kinds of games that started with Prince of Persia. Essentially, it used a physics engine that was grounded in reality, focused on heavy puzzle elements, and featured a character that was extremely well animated. Most featured rotoscoping, or the process of creating sprite animation based on actual human movement. You've likely played a number of cinematic platformers beyond Prince of Persia. For instance, Out of This World and Flashback were two incredibly popular 16-bit games in the genre. I played and enjoyed both of those and really began to appreciate what these types of games offered. They weren't just nice looking, they often had settings and stories that went well beyond what you were seeing from traditional turtle hoppers back in the day. In September of 1994, Blizzard released Blackthorn for the Super Nintendo and PC, a new entry into the cinematic platformer stable. It took a number of cues from the games I mentioned earlier, but added a lot more action to the mix. In fact, as much as I loved games like Out of This World, I really enjoyed the new focus on offensive capabilities. That Super Nintendo release ended up being one of my favorite games of the year, so you can imagine my excitement when it was revealed that a Sega 32X edition was planned for the following year, released in October of 1995. In this episode, we are going to take a look at that, talk about the upgrades and additional content it has, and see if it's something you should play today. I hope you guys enjoy my review of Blackthorn for the Sega 32X. The story here is one that starts off like so many before it. The Kingdom of Androth on the planet of Tool has come under attack from the evil Sarlacc. Knowing that his fate is sealed, the king sends his son to Earth in a last-ditch effort to protect him. Once the opportunity presents itself, you set out to avenge your father and free your people. The game begins with you assaulting the minds of Androth, and you immediately begin to understand the depth of your adventure. There are obstacles and enemies at every turn. This is not going to be easy. Fortunately, you are armed with a shotgun that never seems to run out of ammunition. It's a good thing, too, because these enemies aren't just going to stand there and take your vengeance lying down. That's where the cover system comes into play. Blackthorn allows the main hero and his adversaries to take cover in the background. This means you will need to time your shots without getting shot yourself. That shotgun isn't the only weapon at your disposal. During your trek, you'll run across different kinds of bombs. Some are simple and do a little bit of damage, while others can be remotely detonated from quite a distance. The gameplay from there pretty much mirrors what you've seen in Prince of Persia. You can run, jump, and climb your way around the environments, and you'll get plenty of chances to exercise those skills. Nothing is straightforward in this world. Getting from point A to point B usually entails climbing around, finding keys to bridges, levitators to get higher up, and blowing up force field generators. You'll also have numerous interactions with the people of this world. Some will help you with items, while others will try and stop you. As you make your way across the five different areas, obstacles get more complicated, enemies get more aggressive, and you'll need to practice patience as much as aggression. There's power-ups for your main weapon and life replenishment along the way. The original release of Blackthorn on the PC and Super Nintendo came with rotoscoped sprites and traditional backgrounds. It was a great looking and animated engine that did the material quite a bit of justice. When the 32X project began, it was helmed by Paradox Development, who wanted to upgrade things to look more in line from what you'd expect from a new 32-bit machine. This led to new digitized pre-rendered sprites and backgrounds being used to spruce things up. The 32X does an excellent job with it too. This was originally meant for the Sega Genesis, where it no doubt would have taken a sizable hit in overall visual fidelity. 
The usual issues the 32X had with 2D engines doesn't apply here, since the stages do not scroll. Instead, they flip screen to screen, allowing the 32X hardware to paint all those nice colors without resorting to the Genesis help. Thanks to the 24 megabit ROM, we also get some really nice animation. Every action is silky smooth, from the simplest motion of climbing a ledge to the most brutal of deaths. I also appreciated the background touches in every region. In the forested area, a massive rainstorm rages while you explore around, and it's constantly snowing in the mountain region. Even inside the mines, you get some nice waterfall effects to give the atmosphere a bit more sway. Most cinematic platformers held their own visually, so it's no surprise that Blackthorn here still manages to impress all these years later. It definitely has an edge over the original release and is one of the 32X platform's better looking two-dimensional titles. <laughs> As much as I love the graphics and gameplay of Blackthorn, I was less enthusiastic about the sound and music. I'd even go so far as to say no version of this game sounds particularly great. The stuff here is fast, aggressive, and sounds like it belongs in a first-person shooter. I would have much preferred some ambient sounds mixed with more relaxed music that would kick up a notch when facing enemies. I have a selection of tracks to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Blackthorn is point blank one of the better cinematic platformers out there. Its heavy focus on gunplay earns it mad respect from me. Instead of feeling helpless, you have all the tools you'll need to be a badass. In many ways, Blackthorn is the antithesis of a game like Out of This World. There you were running for your life much of the time. Here, Blackthorn stands his ground against every enemy and always has a fighting chance. This level of action does mean that the puzzle elements take a back seat, but there is still plenty of exploration to be done to get through this adventure. Not every solution is immediately obvious and there is quite a lot of trial and error. Some stages are so spread out and their secrets so well hidden, it's actually easy to get stuck. A password system is in place to help you along the way, but you only get a new one once the area you are in is completed. That means that Blackthorn will not be easily defeated in a single setting. This is particularly true of the 32X version because it has an entirely new area to play. The snowy mountain stages are not in the Super Nintendo or PC editions of the original. The weaknesses that you'll find here mostly exist because of the nature of game design back then. While there are some cool enemies, you'll be mostly facing the same handful of grunts that fight the same way the entire time. A few new enemies could have gone a long way with that extra stage. I also really wish that Paradox Development had given this a more appropriate soundtrack. This is a slow game with a heavy focus on its environments, and I think the current soundtrack for it is all wrong. What's here isn't bad, mind you, it just doesn't fit the game. All things considered, however, Blackthorn is a killer addition to the small 32X library. Whereas most ports to the device wallowed in mediocrity, this one is an absolute must-own.
Whether it's on the 32X, Super Nintendo, or modern platforms via the Blizzard Arcade Collection, Blackthorn is a memorable and well-designed cinematic platformer that stands right up there with the flashbacks and Prince of Persia's of the genre. It's more action-focused, so even if you did not take to those games, I still recommend you give this one a shot. The slow and thoughtful gameplay belies the epic adventure within. The upgraded graphics were a nice touch back then, and the extra level added some much-needed variety to the original game. Its only real shortcomings are needing a few new enemy types and a soundtrack that doesn't quite fit this style of game. And for a 32X game, that's a godsend compared to the problems you usually faced on the platform. I would imagine that many of you out there have not played Blackthorn before. Despite being one of the better 32X titles, few publications at the time even bothered to review it. Of the few they did, it scored well and was praised on similar merits as you saw here. That really was a problem for many games on the 32X. Sega didn't advertise these games much, and the gaming magazines didn't think anyone cared enough to cover them. You can't sell games that most people don't know exist. To further compound the problem, Sega only published this in the United States, with Brazil being the only other region to get it thanks to Tech Toy. That means if you were a Sega fan in the rest of the world, you never saw Blackthorn for the 32X at all. Of course, the quality of this one mixed with its relative obscurity means that collecting it today is expensive. A loose cart will cost you $100 plus, while a complete inbox mint auction can go for hundreds more. While that might put off many of you from collecting it, I still recommend you at least play it. The 32X didn't have many games at this level, and it's just as much fun now as it was way back when. I'm Sega Lord X. thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.